Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. The week starting Monday, June the 1st, 2020. The day that, certainly in Amsterdam, the terraces reopen. It's really interesting that that sort of social, um, shall we say, pleasure aspect of life is getting really reinforced this week on in a week of course when we have the Venus Sun conjunction Venus in Cassini Venus Sun conjunction on Wednesday so that's one of the um, events in this rather eventful week um, because we're coming now into um, eclipse season on the 5th of June we have a lunar eclipse in 15 degrees 34 Sagittarius then on June the 21st, which is the summer solstice, we have um, a solar eclipse on the axis of the world there in zero degrees 21, I think it is Cancer. So that's a very powerful eclipse there. And then the final summer eclipse is the second lunar eclipse, which is going to be on July the 5th, actually here in middle European time in 13 degrees 38 Capricorn. So we're in eclipse season. What we know about eclipses is that they are kind of ruptures, if you like, in the fabric of being, uh, that things are disrupted. They're not quite um, as things are a little bit more unpredictable than normal, um, a bit unsettling, and events tend to have that quality of fatedness because the moon's nodes, of course, are involved. But there's that general sense of heightened, um, certainly with a lunar eclipse, heightened emotions. Um, so yeah, if we look at the moon, indeed, moon is, of course, ebb and flow within the collective. It, it, the moon rules the people in mundane astrology, the tribe. And when the moon is eclipsed, we're looking at things like emotional insecurities. You know, uh, I think the um, image of a child losing a parent on a busy market, I think most of us have had that experience when we were growing up of losing a parent. It's like your security blanket has been taken away. You don't know what's going to happen next. And it's that kind of energy that we find accompanying lunar eclipses. But then, of course, when we start to big it up and take it into the collective, it's a collective sense as well of being outside of your comfort zone, not sure what's going to happen next in this emotional turmoil. And also on a more individual level with lunar eclipses, you know, our emotional responses might not be completely in touch or in tune with what's going on. There's that sense of disconnectedness. So we have to be careful with our emotional um, responses to things because they might be out of proportion or set things in motion that, um, you know, are, are then leading a life of their own thereafter, shall we say. So it's, it's a big week. Um, we're coming into this sort of eclipse season now and it all kicks off this week. So um, let's just start a little back backtrack because that lunar eclipse is actually on Friday. So I think we want to go a little bit, you know, more into the beginning of the week. And we see on Wednesday, for example, we have Venus um, in Gemini retrograde squaring Mars in Pisces. This is a bit of a this is a bit of a strange square because Mars exalts Venus. You know, it's like you have this image of Mars, you know, reaching out, you know, to love and adore Venus. But Venus is is moving almost in a different direction. She's moving towards the other symbol of the male, if you like, which is the sun. But there is that square before the Venus sun conjunction, Mars gets in there. So it's all about relationships there. It's all about the difficulty of keeping a relationship afloat in a kind of quite a difficult um, passage for Venus. She's retrograde. She's in a very intellectual, very thoughtful, very rational sign. And Mars, of course, in Pisces is very emotional, very, um, you know, all giving without borders, you know, wants to almost submerge Venus, you know, with all this love and devotion. But Venus is abstract thinking, you know, social, but kind of like the social butterfly. I always think Venus in Gemini is very much, 
yeah the perfume in the air the social butterfly the ability to meet and connect with lots of people but not that real sense of true committal not yet and then we get the venus conjunction with the sun which um you know it's a part of the passage of venus there into the underworld she's moving back away from the sun but she's in gemini so it's um it's it's a very um as i said for venus in gemini it's all about meeting communicating connecting exchanging ideas and it's very non-committal in a way but it's still it's all about love and connection and the complexities of love and connection the complexities of um yeah the i mean a week of eclipse as well a lunar eclipse of um you know finding the right balance between being so free that there is actually no um real relationship anymore how do we keep that all in balance so it's kind of complex there and we see it on wednesday with venus square mars sun conjunct venus and then the lunar eclipse on friday so yeah we have uh, anyway that's wednesday venus square mars sun conjunct venus getting up to friday then we have mercury sextile uranus which is all about the importance about talking finding the right words to talk about our feelings i think that's really really important because during that lunar eclipse you know the sun is very strong the sun is in gemini mercury rules the sun so we have to find new ways of communicating because if we don't when we take a close look at that lunar eclipse it's square mars and mars is conjunct neptune so there's um there's a t square there with mars and um neptune as the focal point there so mercury is important mercury conjunct uranus moving into dialogue actually daring to speak the unspeakable you know to um really um because the mercury is out of bounds as well so we have to go there we have to make these taboo subjects in a way um um approachable we have to as well expose our feelings somewhat and that's very difficult in eclipses we're almost frightened to to show because we know we're going to be like that child on the market you know we've lost um our base we we were kind of fearful yeah it's a very very tense eclipse that eclipse mars in pisces you get the sense of marching feet there movement mass movement with neptune in the picture as well pisces the sign the sign of victimhood but also the sign of redemption it's a highly sensitive mars it's power in numbers with mars conjunct neptune i always think of mars as being the fighting arm of the sun but then i think what kind of fighting arm is mars in neptune well it's a rabble isn't it it's a flash mob it's it's not an organized sort of army this this is more like the riot you know and we're certainly sort of seeing that manifesting at the moment in the us as well you know so yeah this mercury pisces it's very difficult to contain it's oceanic it's the mass it's big it's surging and we're coming into eclipse season not at the end of it so this is all very fraught and i think with mercury out of bounds sextile uranus the more we dare to um talk about things that are really difficult i think the more chance we have of steering our way through what is potentially a very um difficult i think eclipse season okay i'd like to thank you for listening have a great week thank you bye